The CBS Radio Mystery Theater presents... Marshall. You can't take it with you. This has been the conventional wisdom. Certainly it would be difficult to find someone who might seriously disagree. And yet, privately, of course, does everyone really believe that? The way some people build up treasures and possessions, you'd actually think they were making provision not for just today and tomorrow, but forever. My darling, we will love each other forever. Forever. I will make you immortal. How? Just close your eyes. Oh, no. That's a gun. It will be over in a moment. I'll be dead forever. Trust me. Have faith in me. No! Our mystery drama, A Woman in Red. Here's Robert L. Green. It is sponsored in part by Buick Motor Division. I'll be back shortly with Act One. There is a lid for every pot. Somewhere, there's a man for every woman. A tool for every job and a worker for every task. There is no end to the resourcefulness of the human race. When we need something, we manage to find it. And if it doesn't exist, we eventually invent it. This is what's known as progress. However, some things are harder to come by than others. A gentleman you are about to meet named Mr. Ledyard LaRue has a rather unusual problem in recruitment. And as we meet him right now, he is in a place where he believes his problem can be solved. The sign on the window says Bernie's Bar. And it is a rather disreputable-looking watering place. Name your poison. Poison? Uh, a manner of speaking, Jack. What'll you have? Nothing. Nothing? I wish to converse with you very frankly. Look, I run a gin mill. I don't sell frank conversation. I only peddle booze. Well, sir, Bernie, that's the name on the window. Have I the honor of addressing Bernie himself? If you're hard up for honors, you can recoup here. I need your guidance. I don't sell guidance. I only sell... Booze. I know. You only sell booze. Now, sir, Bernie, you strike me as a thoroughgoing rogue. I do? Yes. And this rather low, seedy saloon is most likely a rendezvous for all sorts of thieves and worse. Uh, how would you like to pick your change and get out of here? Will that hold to the basic nature of your establishment? I have $500 for you. To do what? To do nothing. And what do you want to give me $500 for? As a finder's fee. What am I supposed to find? A skilled, experienced thief. <laughs> what makes you think I know any? Oh, I see. We're haggling over the price. Make it a thousand. No, no, no. Look, 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 you just can't walk in here and call me a crook. I didn't call you a crook. I said, find me a crook. Ah, okay, mister. Uh, what good kind of game are you playing? I told you. I need the services of a skillful, experienced thief. I don't know any. Are you, are you not interested in pocketing a thousand dollars? How do I know you're not a cop? Could you have survived this long if you weren't expert when it came to spotting policemen? You know I'm not a cop. I'm a rather wealthy but eccentric gentleman. Uh, wait here. Bainey says you're looking for help. What's your name? Emmett Porcelain. What kind of a name is that? I got a lot of names. You don't like this one? I'll give you another. How much do you charge? What do you mean, how much do I charge? Don't you have rates? For what? For stealing. When I steal something, I keep it. But when you steal for me, I'm going to keep it. What am I supposed to steal? The woman in red. Goodbye. Kidnapping's out of my line. 
It's a painting. Yeah, a, a painting? A picture. I know what a painting is. You think it's talking to some hoodlum? It's in the museum. I go to the museums. Great places to pick up names. This <laughs> painting is by Van der Locken. you got to be crazy. You don't steal paintings, not well-known paintings. Why not? What can you do with them? Who can you sell them to? You want to steal? Ice, furs, cash, bonds. I want the woman in red. What are you going to do with her? That's not your affair. Where is it again? I'd rather you refer to her as she. She's at the downtown museum. Oh, just like that, huh? She's at the downtown museum. You know how that joint's guarded? If it were a simple matter, I could do it myself. To heist the picture from the downtown, how much? Ten thousand dollars. Make it twenty. Fifteen. Where do I deliver the picture? <laughs> Lieutenant Birdwell. No, nothing yet. Well, I'll give you your choice. You can write police are following a number of promising leads, or you can write that we are completely baffled. Take your pick. Off the record, Maury, I am really baffled. How would a piece of junk like that be worth a half a million bucks? Woman in red. It don't even look like a woman. It doesn't even look like anything. I'm a what? Okay, I'm a barbarian. Have it your way. The uh, whole world's crazy. What do you want? Lieutenant Birdwell, I'm Detective Rodriguez. Good for you. Marie Concepcion Anita Pilar Rodriguez y Bordon, to be exact. I'm with the rape squad. Well, you're in the wrong office. This year. I know. This is robbery. So what are you doing here? I think I may have solved the museum burglary. Oh, that's very interesting. The biggest art theft so far in this country, and it's got us all up a tree. Somebody somehow got into that museum sometime during the night, managed to deactivate the most sophisticated and efficient alarm system in the world, a completely foolproof system. The Titanic was advertised as an unsinkable ship. Now, take it easy, Detective Rodriguez. Nevertheless, I solved it. Well, how did you solve it? I wish I could say by the use of brilliant detective work, but I can't. Why can't you? I solved it because I was lucky. That's better than being brilliant. Tell me about your luck. I take a class in filmmaking at night at City College. Why? Uh, Never mind. I shouldn't have asked. To broaden my horizons. Oh, very good. My instructor, Professor Slobodkin, Vilmosh Slobodkin, the famous Czechoslovak director. Do we need him? Oh, yes. Yes, he, he happened to be in the museum the afternoon before the woman in red was stolen. Oh, no. We're not going to find out he stole it, are we? Vilmos is a most unobtrusive photographer. People were hardly aware that a movie was being made. And so? Just last night, during class, we looked at some of the footage. And I saw the thief. You saw the thief? Lieutenant... You have this most disconcerting manner of repeating the last part of everybody's sentences. Well, how did you know he or she was the thief? Vilmos' camera panned over the crowd, choosing a face here, face there, giving us a profile, a full view, a close-up. Now, one of those faces looked familiar. Where had I seen this face before? I had a blow-up made of that piece of film. Here, examine it, if you please. See if you don't experience the same stab of recognition. Stab of recognition, eh? Please, examine the photo. Yeah. Hey. It's... It's porcelain. Emmett Porcelain. Precisely. What would Emmett Porcelain be doing in a museum? And at four in the afternoon. Exactly eight hours before the woman in red was stolen. That doesn't make sense. Porcelain wouldn't steal a painting. (laughs) Porcelain would steal anything. Anything he could raise cash on, but a painting, a painting known all over the world, who would fence it for him? I can only answer you in the words of Samuel Johnson. Does he have anything to do with this case? Some 200 years ago, he wrote, I have found you an argument. I am not obliged to find you an understanding. Oh, that sounds a little snippy to me, Detective. Remember, you are talking to a superior officer. So, 
ceramic porcelain. It's an interesting speculation. Uh, Pollen, give me the commissioner. Yeah. Porcelain. Uh-huh. Of course, no one was looking for Emmett Porcelain. He was never known as an art thief. He's too smart to steal a painting. Well, there's the art thief who falls in love with a painting and wants to keep it all to himself, share it with no one. Who could fall in love with that woman in red? It's a bunch of crazy lines and blots and who knows what. Perhaps, to some. Now, look, are you telling me that Emmett Porcelain fell in love with that so-called portrait and that's why he stole it? I think he was hired to steal it. Yeah, Lieutenant Birdwell. Oh, yes, sir. Yeah, we have a tremendous lead. A skillful, experienced thief, Emmett Porcelain. We have him in a museum the day of the robbery. Now, I know it's impossible to fence, but I still say... I still say he did it. Well, well, sir, with all due respect, I found you an argument. I'm not obliged to find you an understanding. Yes, sir, we'll bring him in. Well, Detective Rodriguez, thank you very much. You can go back to duty now. I am on duty, Lieutenant. Well, I mean to say, don't you have to go back to... I asked Inspector Nystrup if I could be transferred to your section for this investigation, and he agreed. He agreed. Why? Because I was an art major in college. You'll receive official notification. Dandy. Why don't we go pick up porcelain? Now, look, Detective, this is a potentially dangerous situation. No, it isn't. Porcelain never goes about armed. He eschews violence. He what violence? Doesn't use it. He's very smart. Oh, okay. Let's check him out. I already have. He spends most of his free time at Bernie's Bar. Bernie... Where can I find Emmett Porcelain? Uh, who's Emmett Porcelain? A place that says known criminals is subject to loss of license. Oh, oh well, why didn't you say his name more uh, distinctly? Emmett Porcelain. <laughs> what do you want him for? We understand there's a move afoot to have him appointed adjunct professor of Sanskrit at the city college. You're joking. So you see... We have to find him quickly and see if he's interested in the job before they give it to somebody else. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, well, he's living with this chick at 18 Maple Crescent. Thank you, Bernie. Uh, but listen, you didn't hear it from me. Hmm, doesn't seem to be an answer. We'll go downstairs and wait for him. I think he's home. He doesn't answer the bell. Well, if he'd gone out, he'd have taken in the milk. Maybe he hasn't come home yet, huh? The fact is, he doesn't answer the bell. The fact is, if you turn the handle, the door opens. The fact is, we don't have a search warrant. The fact is, we're not here to search the house. We've come to talk to Mr. Emmett Porcelain. We rang the bell. Did we hear or did we imagine we heard someone call, come in? I think we did hear it. Lieutenant, look. Hold it. It's porcelain. And he's... Yeah. He's dead. Well, we seem to have corralled a group of eccentrics on both sides of the law. And it looked for all the world as if this would turn into some cute little caper. But there's nothing cute about murder. Mr. Emmett Porcelain is anything but cute as he lies sprawled on the floor, a bullet hole in his chest. His life ended for all time. But if this is the end for him, it's only the beginning for us. We continue with Act Two very shortly. An extremely fine and valuable painting has been stolen from a museum because a gentleman whose name is Ledyard LaRue hired an expert thief, Emmett Porcelain, to steal it for him. So far, we don't know why. We do know that Police Lieutenant Birdwell 
and Detective Maria Rodriguez had a lead to Emmett Porcelain. We say had because Mr. Emmett Porcelain's life has come to rather an abrupt ending. Death caused by 32 caliber bullet wound in the heart. Thank you, Doctor. Well, so far, Detective Rodriguez, we haven't learned too much that's new. He's been shot to death, and that we knew all along. We found the body at 9 p.m., the time of death, about 6.30. But the painting was missing. Assuming he stole it in the first place. We know he did. How do we know that? Well, what was he doing in the museum that day? All kinds of people go to museums. Oh, not porcelain. He'd only have gone if he intended to steal the painting. Let me say this to you, Detective Rodriguez. You are a snob. Why? You figure Emmett Porcelain a crook. Not cultured. Not even educated. Maybe just about semi-literate. How could he possibly be interested in the higher things in life? No. If he goes into a museum, it's not to enjoy the beauties of art, but the case to join for a burglary. Very well, Lieutenant. You tell me what he was doing there. Just a minute. Lieutenant Birdwell. Oh, yeah, yeah. Send her in. It's Porcelain's playmate. Playmate? Roommate, soulmate. Who knows? Are uh, you, uh, Angela Halberstadt? Okay, so you know my name. Did you live with Emmett Porcelain? Well, I wouldn't call it living. Uh, did you uh, occupy the same premises? When he was home. Where was he usually? At Bernie's bar. Who'd want to kill him? I'd want to kill him. Did you? No. Who else would? Nobody. Why should anybody want to kill him? He was such a good-natured slob. Why did somebody kill him? It beats me. Did he ever mention a woman in red? Oh, sister, he was too smart to mention another dame in front of me. It's a painting. I said to him, if you ever... What do you mean, a painting? A famous painting named The Woman in Red by Van der Locken was recently stolen from the museum. Oh, you got a wrong number there. What would he do with the painting? What was the last job he did? Now, look, he, he's dead now, so what does it matter? The last job. It might be the reason why he's dead. Oh, he, he never got mixed up with dangerous kinds of jobs. Strictly high-class burglary. Oh, he was an artist. He would tell Bernie... Yeah? He would tell Bernie... Listen, I, I, I don't, I don't want to get... Married. He got jobs through Bernie, didn't he? Didn't he? What was the last one? I, I don't know. What was it? I don't know what it was. See, a week or ten days ago, he, he gets a phone call. It's, it's late at night. Where are you going, I ask? Over to Bernie's, he answers. What for? Bernie's got a live one for me, he says. It's worth ten G's. To do what? He never would tell me. All right, what else do you know about it? That's all I know about it. Did he do the job? I don't know. He never said. Did you see the $10,000? Well, he didn't show it to me. But I'll tell you one thing. He sure acted like he had it. And he said Bernie sent the job his way. Oh, that Bernie. If you ask me, he don't run a gin mill. He's got an employment agency there. And how soon will the construction be finished? Well, I gotta say, I ain't had an order for one of these in, oh, it's gotta be 20 years. You haven't answered my question, Mr. Kruger. Well, in them days, people figured they'd build their own bomb shelters. Mr. Kruger. Ten days. Now, it don't take much time to pour the concrete. And we gotta put in ventilation systems. But I don't want a... Oh, bedroom. that's all right. You don't want a bomb shelter, you just want a mausoleum. An underground mausoleum. Uh, I can do that. In a week. Very well. I shall hold you to your word. <laughs> I'll say one thing. I never seen the like of this. I mean, your sketch, it looks like a regular tomb. It does? Yeah. Like one of them old tombs for the Egyptian kings or pharaohs or whatever. I mean, what do you plan to put in there? I'm not sure it's really any of your affair, is it, Mr. Kruger? No, 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 no. As long as you pay your bill when the work is done, Mr. Larrow. Oh, 
Okay, Bernie calls Porcelain in to do a job. Now, let's assume it was to steal the woman in red. Porcelain pulls it off. Porcelain gets murdered. Why? Somebody wanted the picture stolen. That somebody is now out to separate himself from the thief. Or maybe Bernie took part in a double cross. Mm -mm, I don't think so. Not for $10,000. Bernie has too much at stake to risk murder for so little money. $10,000 is a lot of money. That's another thing that bothers me. You hear various values assigned to that woman in red. All of them are at least hundreds of thousands of dollars. I wouldn't give you 15 cents for it. But no one wanted to sell it to you. Now, why would porcelain steal it for so little money? What's all that traffic up ahead? Huh? Oh, hey, those are squad cars. Something's happened up there. Oh, here's a uniformed man diverting the traffic. You got to turn left at the corner, bud. I'm Lieutenant Birdwell, officer. What's going on here? The fellow that runs a saloon on the corner, Bernie's. He's been shot. Yeah, the same gun, huh? Okay, Doc. Thanks. Both Porcelain and Bernie were killed by bullets fired from the same gun. Makes sense, doesn't it, Lieutenant? Uh, it was necessary to murder both Bernie and Porcelain. Beats me. This is a man who... Well, wait a minute. Why do you say it's a man? Why couldn't it be a woman? Because the stolen portrait is the woman in red. Oh, that's just a title. That picture could represent anything. A man falls in love with a painting. He wants it for himself. All for himself. Where's your proof? He doesn't intend to sell it. All he can really do with it is perhaps... Hold it for ransom. In which case, it's like a kidnapping. Has the museum been contacted for money so far? No. Oh, I'm sure it won't be. Unless we find the painting, it'll never be seen again. Well, that couldn't be the greatest tragedy. Oh, it's really a beautiful painting, Lieutenant. If you look at it properly. Okay, okay. You say a guy fell in love with a picture. Mm-hmm. And he had it stolen because... He wants it all for himself? Oh, I'm sure of it. I never heard of such nonsense. It could happen. Now, my darling, shall we have some music? How beautiful you are. Mozart. He seems to suit you. How old are you? Twenty. Yes. Van der Lachen painted you when you were twenty years old. Well, I'm twice your age, but I'm not too old for you. Do you know when I fell in love with you? When I saw you in the Rijksmuseum in Amsterdam, it was love at first sight. I came back to America and tried to forget you, but it was no use. Then when you came here to America, to the downtown, I knew I would have to have you. And you are mine. Mine forever. I shall take you with me. We shall never be apart. Never. My woman in red. My beautiful woman in red. Oh, be still. Excuse me, darling, but this persistent fool. Yes. Mr. Leroux? Who is this? It's me, Kruger. Yes, what do you want? I want my money. You'll get your money. The deal was on completion, you know. I know. I agreed. The tomb, or whatever you want to call it, it was finished yesterday. I said you'd get your money. Well, the reason I could give you the price was because I expected to get paid right away. You're going to get paid. When? Tonight. I'll come over to your house and pay you. Oh, no, you don't have to. I mean, I could stop by there tomorrow. No, I'd rather you got yours tonight. Goodbye. Excuse me, my darling. I am bedeviled by these morons. Soon, there shall be no interruptions. Soon, the whole world will consist only of you and me. Yeah, you're right. It is a nut. The guy wants the painting all to himself. Now, what do we really know? One night, say about a month ago, 
man comes into a saloon, makes Bernie an offer. Bernie then introduces him to Porcelain. But even if that man exists, we have no way in this world of finding him. Oh, boy, listen to that. It's got to be the commissioner. He's getting the heat, and he's passing it right down. Are you going to answer it? I guess there's no way out. We also got politics, international politics. That painting was on loan from Holland. Do you want me to answer it? Oh, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Tell him, uh... <laughs> Let's see what kind of brilliant excuse you can make up for me, huh? Lieutenant Birdwell's desk. Detective Rodriguez. Yes? Who? Oh, yes. Well, what? Oh. Yes, I, I see. Yes. Yes, I'll tell him. Who was that? And what bad news did he have? That was the medical examiner. There was a murder last night. A man named Elvard Kruger. He was a stonemason. Well, why do I have to know about it? He was killed by a thirty-two caliber bullet, which... Which was fired from the same gun that killed Porcelain and Bernie? How did you know? Well, what else could it be? If we don't catch this guy soon, he's going to wipe out the entire city. Not an unreasonable assumption. At least, that's the way this thing has been going. Well, you're ahead of Lieutenant Birdwell and Sergeant Rodriguez. But not by very much. I'm sure there are a great many questions you will also want answered. And uh, that happens in the place we always set aside for it. Act three, which I shall bring to you in just a moment. As you know, the woman in red, a valuable painting, has been stolen from the museum. A Mr. Ledyard LaRue commissioned a Mr. Emmett Porcelain to perform the deed, and then killed Mr. Porcelain, and also a gentleman named Bernie, who functioned as a sort of agent for Mr. Porcelain. Mr. LaRue has also murdered a Mr. Kruger, who has built a tomb or a mausoleum or a crypt for him. Evidently, it is extremely hazardous to perform services for this Mr. Ledger LaRue. Now, Mrs. Kruger, I'm sorry I have to bother you, but... Did your husband have any enemies? Oh, no, no. Everyone liked Elva. Did he know a man named Bernie? Bernie. Bernie ran a saloon. Oh, the day he married me, he promised to keep out of saloons. He has not set foot inside one in 35 years. Did he know a man named Emmett Porcelain? Oh, what kind of crazy name is that? Did he? No. No, I knew everybody he knew. What did uh, Mr. Kruger do? He was a mason. He could do everything. He'd make you a patio. He'd make you a wall. He'd make you a swimming pool. The last thing he made was a, a grave. A grave? Yeah. He, he was working from a diagram. It, it looked like, like a room. It was made out of reinforced concrete. It was underground. A shelter? Oh, that's what I said. He said, no, it, it was a grave. Oh, whose grave, I asked. Ah, that's a secret, he said. No one was supposed to know, not even me. A grave? A crypt? A vault? Uh, did he ever finish it? Well, he must. You see, the other night I said to him, let's go to the pictures. He says, no, I got to stick around. The guy's coming over to pay me. Go by yourself. I, I went by myself. I come home. He was dead. Who did he build the thing for? I told you, I don't know. Well, wouldn't he have a record of it in his book? Yeah, I guess he would. Listen, do you think this guy might have... We'd certainly like to know his name. Well, he kept everything in a book. Right here on the table. Yeah. You see, he would contract for a job. He'd write down the guy's name, address, price, get the record of everything he spent, labor and so forth. Yeah, it would have to be on the last page... Had to be the last job he'd done. Well, that's as 
Mr. Norman Selenkowski. Oh, wait a minute. That ain't the last job he done. Mr. Selenkowski was a, a cement wall. Yeah, but it's the last one in the book. Lieutenant, there's a page torn out. Are you sure he kept the record? He always kept the record. The killer could have torn it out. Hold it. We could talk to your husband's helpers. They'd know where the work was done and for whom. Oh, no. No, they wouldn't. Well, why not? Because... Because he worked on it alone. Alone? That was part of the job. He had to do it by himself. Tell nobody where it was, for who or anything. So every morning he'd go away in the truck and he'd come back at night. He didn't even tell you? He said, I promised the guy. He seemed to be enjoying the idea. I think he would have told me later on. Hey. Did he tell you anything about the man, who he was, what he looked like? No. Did he drop any kind of information we could use? No. Hmm. Well, thank you, Mrs. Kruger. Well, are you going to catch this killer? Or is this going to be another one of those unsolved crimes? Sit down, Ledyard. I am so glad to see you. How are you, Doctor? Oh, I'm just fine. I wish I could say the same about you. Well, I'm resigned to it. Well, I must say, you've taken it remarkably well. You said that when the pains came, I would know that it would only be a matter of a week or two? Yes. Have they? Not as bad as I thought they'd be, but they make their presence known. Will they get worse? No. No. Actually, they'll even diminish. Uh, Ledyard, I happened to be in your part of town yesterday. You should have dropped in. I did. You weren't home. Oh, I'm sorry. I looked in through the living room window, and I saw the lovely things you have. The furniture, the antiques. I, um, uh, I thought you'd got rid of them. No, I didn't. Oh, what are you going to do with them? I intend to put them in a safe place. I was hoping you'd leave them to a museum. No, I won't. Why not? You really don't have anyone near or dear to leave them to. Doctor, I don't intend to leave my beautiful things to anybody. Well, unfortunately, somebody's going to get them. No, I don't think so. The fact is, you can't take them with you. Are you sure of that? I'm not sure I understand you. Forget it. Goodbye, Doctor. I won't see you again. I'll drop by tomorrow and every day. Please don't. I'm making plans. Yes, I would imagine so. Plans to just steal away from the world. Well, I guess this is it, Detective Rodriguez. We're licked. Stumped, we're up a tree. We'll never crack this case. And you might just as well go back to the peace and quiet of the rape squad. Oh, we'll solve it. Oh, we already did that. We know who stole it, but he's dead. We also know why it was stolen. You mean some guy fell in love with the woman in red and wants it for his very own? I'll tell you who this man is. You mean you know his name? Do you know what the pharaohs of ancient Egypt did? Does that have a bearing on this case? Oh, yes. They believe you could take your treasures with you to the next world. A king, a man of wealth, was buried with his possessions. So he could take them to the next world. Look, what does all the this... The people who prepared the pharaoh's tomb. The ones who buried him. Do you know what happened to them? Detective, I have lived this long without... They were all killed. For two reasons. First, so they could serve as his slaves in the next world. Second... So they would be unable to come back later and rob the tomb. Now look at what's happening here. A man is in love with a painting. He has it stolen, kills the people who did it. Then he has his tomb or a crypt constructed and kills the man who built it. Why? Because he plans to have treasures in his grave. And one of them, the woman in red. Detective Rodriguez, where do you get this nonsense? Excuse me. Are you Lieutenant Birdwell? 
Ah, uh, yes. In charge of the woman in red investigation. Do you have any information? Well, I'm in a very difficult position. A man who is not just a patient, but also a lifelong friend. Well... Yes? This gentleman has contracted a rare but fatal disease. There is absolutely no cure. Within the next week, he'll be dead. And he stole the woman in red? I... Well... I paid him a visit the other day. He's quite a recluse. No one ever comes to see him. He has the most beautiful things in his home. He was out. But I happened to glance through the window. And I saw the woman in red hanging on the wall. I want to thank you for coming forward, Doctor. If he had only planned to enjoy the painting for the very brief remainder of his life, I would have remained silent. However, he spoke to me of uh, taking his treasures with him. And in the classical sense, that might mean he intended to be buried with them somewhere in secret. A uh, Doctor... Your patient's name? Mr. Ledyard Lovell. Well, let's not take any chances. There's no such thing as a harmless nut. You sit in the car, Detective Rodriguez. No. And cover me. Eddie, you and Al, go around the back. Okay, let's hit it. Open up in there. Hey, I told you to wait in the car. Can't you see, Lieutenant? Look through the window. The place is empty. A man is gone. And he took everything with him. This man will be dead in a week or ten days. And if we don't find him before that time, everything will be gone forever. In that tomb he built for himself? Yes. He built his final resting place. And like some ancient king, filled it with the things he loved in this world. Well, there may be one way we can capture him and recover the woman in red. Yeah? Why did he steal the painting? Well, according to you, because he fell in love with her. That's right. He fell in love with her. But he settled for the painting because that's all that was available to him. Suppose he could have the living woman in red. Now, before I even ask anything else, Detective, where could we ever find some Dutch woman we don't even know who posed for a portrait 20 years ago? You just found her. What? How would you like to go on TV with me, Lieutenant? I would like to thank this station for giving us the time this evening... I'm Lieutenant Birdwell of the police department in charge of the woman in red investigation. And with me tonight is Miss Henrique Van Bremer. Did I pronounce that right? Oh, yes. She is the model who posed for the woman in red. The actual real-life woman in red. Sitting here with me. She's even wearing the same red dress. And she wants to say a few words. Thank you. Um... The painting is so dear to my heart. I would hope that whoever took it would be kind enough to restore it back so that all of us may enjoy it once again. Please? Please. do you want with me? I have the painting. I'd like to talk to you about it. Could you come here? You know I couldn't do that. Would you like to meet me? Oh, yes. Let me tell you where. And if you're not alone... 
Oh, I'll be alone. I'll be able to tell if someone's following you. If that happens, I'll destroy the painting before you can stop me. Woman in red. Oh, you, you startled me. Do you have to shine a light in my eyes? I'm sorry. Come with me. Where are we going? To eternity. I don't understand. You will. Just a few steps this way. And down here. And... Come inside. There's nothing to fear. What is this place? My home. It's a vault. I'll die here among all the things I love. Well, you do have many beautiful things. Yes, aren't they? I spent a lifetime collecting. But now, my life is over. I see. When I was told that I, I must die, I felt I'm so young. It's so unfair. Why me? I'm sorry. Oh, no, no, don't be. I was sorry at first. Sorry for myself. But I see now. It's best to die while the flower is in full bloom. Why wait for decay? And I didn't wish to go alone. Love meant so little in my life because I never found a woman I could love. And then I saw the woman in red. And she ruled out all others. And since she was the only one I could love, I wanted her to be with me. Is that? Why you stole the painting? How could I steal her? She was mine. By right of conquest. Did you have to kill those three men? Yes. But... But what? I am as a king, and others exist to serve me. Their lives are of no consequence. Mr. LaRue, you admit you arranged for the theft of the woman in red. Theft? I took what was mine. You admit you murdered Bernie, Mr. Porcelain, and Mr. Kruger. No. Before you answer, I must inform you of your rights. I know my rights. I am a police officer. You are the woman in red. My queen. My consort. I am taking you with me. I must ask you to come with me. I am prepared to use all proper and necessary force. Darling, it will not hurt. I just place the bullet where it kills instantly. I promise you. There will be no pain. Do not move, beloved. You will make it difficult for me to... I... Please, let go of the gun. My arm. You're, you're breaking my arm. Drop the gun. Darling, you must come with me. Let go of the gun. Uh, thank you. That's better. We could have been king and queen together. You're under arrest, Mr. LaRue. And anything you say may be used against you. Isn't it rather refreshing to have a girl in a perilous position who doesn't have to be rescued by the hero, but is quite capable of getting out of it herself? She came there alone because Legend LaRue would carry out his threat to destroy the painting if she were followed. Our Detective Rodriguez is definitely a lady who can take care of herself. I'll return in just a few moments. Some 50 minutes ago, we asked, can you take it with you? And although we've made some speculations, we really haven't come up with a definitive answer. When we go, we leave something behind. The body. What we take with us is, hopefully, the spirit. It could be the same for our treasures. Perhaps we leave the body of our possessions here below and take their spirit with us. Our cast included Robert L. Green, E.V. Juster, Robert Dryden, Bryna Rayburn, and Earl Hammond. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. And now, a preview of our next tale. Paul, oh, is that you? Of course, oh. who else? And in our own bed. Oh, me, oh, me. 
I'm terrified. It's so dark. It's so dark. Oh, wait a uh, minute. Uh, now, Ben uh, takes care of being in the dark. Uh, now, come here, come here. Come uh, closer. Uh, there. Now, how's that? Uh, Honey, what is it? You're shaking all over. I'm scared out of my life. Another dream. No, no, Paul. It wasn't just another dream. This was a perfect, horrible, special thing. Paul, I, I'm going to die. Well, who isn't? <laughs> what are you talking about, die? I dreamt it. I know it. Dreams don't mean anything. This one did. Well, how? Because it told me when I'm going to die. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams.